Hi, welcome back. When we left off before, we said we had to put shims underneath these cylinders. We have our shims right here. We remove the cylinder, put some kind of sealer on here, put your shim on here. You put it back together. Cylinder is all the way at the bottom and the piston is all the way at the top. You recheck your deck height and make sure it's within the spec. We were looking for 60, 65 thousandths. The other thing you want to do when you send away for your shims, you're going to need shims for your flywheel. Similar, smaller, and they come in an assortment, different thicknesses. What you're looking for, and I, I have to verify this off the top of my head, 2.5 to 4 thousandths of an inch end play. Just like we had on our cam bearings, the main bearing or crankshaft bearing has a thrust surface. That surface is right here. On your flywheel, you have the corresponding, this needs to be cleaned up, you have the corresponding surface that goes against here. Putting shims between your main bearing and your flywheel is what sets the end plate. And right now you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's way too much on end play in this crankshaft. All right, next I want to take a minute and talk about specialty tools. If you're only going to build one engine in your life, don't go out and buy every special tool. There's ways around it. Check the internet. There's all kinds of demonstrations on how to do this with basic tools that you may already own. Here's a couple that I've picked up over the years. One is a magnetic dial indicator. We're going to clamp it here and we'll use this dial. And if you notice, the dial moves is the plunger moves. So we'll put it against the flywheel. We'll push the crankshaft back and forth. And that's how we'll know if we're within spec. The next tool is a very simple, very cheap one. And that's a flywheel lock. You're gonna put this on here. It goes into the teeth for the starter and keeps your assembly from turning while you're tightening it. I recently invested in one of these. I should have done it years ago. It was about a hundred bucks, maybe a little over. The way these work, you have a socket here that goes on your gland nut. These teeth ride on the starter and you simply turn this with a wrench and it will, in order to get 270 foot pounds of torque, on that nut, you only have to exert 30 pounds onto, onto the gear because of the leverage setup. So those are three tools that we're gonna to use to do this process. You can certainly find another way to keep your engine from rotating. You can certainly just use a socket and a breaker, breaker bar, but torquing that to 270, that's important. So right now the crank is pushed all the way to what would be the left on the screen. And my dad's gonna push it towards the right. You can see that changes the end play. We have it written down. So then we chose what shims to choose so we could reach between 0 0.002 and 0 0.005 for end play. Gathered some shims here that we think might be good for us. I'm just going to put a little, a little oil on them. We had this ATF sitting around, so just something to coat them with. And one important thing to note here is you always use three shims. If you find two that are the right thickness, 
don't do it. You need three. Okay, you'll notice that we have left the rear seal off because this may come back off and on a couple times. If you look at the flywheel, it's hard to see, but the space between this one and this one is wider. And that means the flywheel only goes on one way. And these are the two doll pins that are a little farther apart. So we would wanna line it up like so. And you'll see there's your eight doll pins. And we're gonna put the gland nut on and we're gonna tighten it to spec. Then we'll check our end play and see where we're at. Okay, we're taking our tool. This side goes on the gland nut. We can, we could certainly use it as a wrench to tighten our thing by hand. Once it gets tight, we put the gear in there. As I explained before, the gear rides on here. You turn this like so, and it tightens your nut. The other thing I failed to mention is that this tool comes with this. And it, this will bolt to your brake drum, either a wide five or a four lug, it goes on your brake drum. The socket goes on the nut in the center on your rear axle. You have that big nut. And you use the gear to tighten it. And again, that nut needs to be very tight. And this is the tool that'll do it. Okay. We're going to push our crankshaft all the way one way. Let the dial indicator stop. And right about there, we've got it zeroed in. Now we're gonna push it that way and see how far it moves. And that looks to be within spec. There's all the way one way. We're all the way the other way. And we're at three thousands. Okay, so the next step is going to be to remove the flywheel and put the rear main seal in and put it all back together and then double check our work. One thing you want to be careful of, if, if you have your pistons installed and you're rotating your engine, these skirts here will get caught on the block as you rotate it. So it's really important to keep these things in the right orientation because what will happen is as, as you can see, it'll come down and catch the block and jam everything up and not good for your rotating assembly. Okay, I got two gasket sets here. This is a brand I usually use. You see them everywhere. You notice the part number is almost the same. This one has a G at the end. Other than that, it's the same part number. So what's the difference? Well, when you're shopping and you find a cheaper one, it may not have this, the main seal. So, these are these gasket sets are sold main seal separate this particular one with the g at the end has the main seal right in it the flywheel lock has two sides one side fits the teeth of a six volt flywheel the other side fits the teeth of a 12 volt flywheel it just sits in there like that okay hand tight is good enough that'll hold it And there we are. We just torqued our gland nut to 270 foot-pounds. That easy. We're going to leave off at this point for this video. When we come back, we'll continue installing the rings and the pistons and moving forward with assembling the long block. Thank you for watching.